Our research is not just about investing. Our research is, is educating uh, individuals and businesses uh, uh, about how the world is going to change and how to get on the right side of change and stay there so that they can not only do that for themselves, but guide their children and their grandchildren. So I think this is much more than just investing. Uh, and, and I guess the technologies were right uh, for, uh, to enable us to do this. You know, it couldn't have been done 20 years ago. Uh, so I think everything came together if you mean the market institutions in particular, we think they are short innovation in a big way. Uh, we think individuals have uh, a much higher weight in innovation and are more correctly positioned actually. Uh, mm. Yes. Uh, so innovation, um, is it an asset class? No. Uh, I think the, 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 the before crypto, this is the new asset class, crypto, the crypto asset, uh, world. Uh, and before that, equities in uh, the 1600s. So th those are asset classes. Uh, this is a categorization. And inter interestingly, uh, we can look at what happened with emerging markets. Uh, MSCI, how did, what, what's its claim to fame? One of its biggest is creating the category of investing called emerging markets because when i was at capital group and capital was a global investment firm at the time and then finally uh blockchain uh, technology we know they're going that china is going to have its own digital currency the the digital yuan and it's interesting to see how they're evolving that you know it's programmable so if they want to prevent uh, uh transactions they'll be able to do that uh, so it's it's really, really interesting how quickly China is embracing these technologies and running with them. I think uh, on that score, they want the digital yuan to become the reserve currency of Asia. So lots going on. Lots going on. So so we would be remiss. So turning to other asset class, Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. Bitcoin, do you think, or what's your sort of vision for Bitcoin? Is it going to become a reserve currency? Is it scarcity value like real estate. Um, it started the purview of every college student, including my own, um, knew about Bitcoin before their parents did. So what's your kind of vision going out five years and 10 years for Bitcoin as an asset class and a value? We don't have to go out five or 10 years, it's here. Um, it, we believe, uh, we, we wrote a, a white paper in 2016 called Bitcoin ringing the bell for a new asset class. Uh, and so, yes, we believe it's here. We believe that Bitcoin is the reserve currency of the crypto asset ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We also believe that uh, there will be very few huge winners in the crypto space. We think the cryptocurrencies are going to be the huge winners. So this is really flipping the internet on its head in terms of how mm -hmm. it evolved. And the internet evolved without a payments infrastructure. And the reason for that is nobody thought commerce would evolve on it. This was for intelligence and academia and consumers in the United States weren't even allowed to use the internet legally until 1991, a Telecommunications Act. Um, uh, so uh, we believe that uh, the uh, Bitcoin is and crypto world, the value accrual where we will see most of the value accrue is to the cryptocurrencies themselves. This is not what happened in the internet. In the internet, the protocols, so Bitcoin's blockchain is one protocol, Ethereum another, uh, the protocols uh, basically just became standards, right? Technology standards upon which these very valuable applications were built, Facebook, Amazon, and so forth the value accrued to the applications. This time we think the value will accrue to the protocols themselves and the currencies as measured by their currencies. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we believe that Bitcoin is already the reserve currency of the crypto asset ecosystem. Uh, and, and we can see that uh, in that many crypto assets, most I would say 
are, are priced in terms of Bitcoin. So that's the unit of account. The currencies uh, are very important. We think there will be maybe four or five that are that are going to accrue the most value. Now, DeFi, watching it evolve, I mean, we're in the Wild West, decentralized finance. It's very exciting. Uh, and uh, so that's probably why Ether is going to be another one. Um, we do have uh, a, a fund right now only with two currencies in it. Uh, this is a private fund, uh, and that's Bitcoin and Ether. But we're scouring the scene. Some of the custody arrangements uh, associated with others like Decred um, aren't quite there yet. Uh, so, you know, again, we're, we're picking our, our spots carefully. Um, and so, yes, we think it's an asset class. We think Bitcoin itself uh, will, uh, I was quoted in some paper, I never said this, but uh, someone did some homework and added uh, what I was saying up and said, uh, you know, ARK thinks this is a $10 trillion opportunity when it came to Bitcoin. And I said, I never said that, but I, I did actually say it uh, with the building blocks. We think institutional could be, um, could institutional going to say five or six percent of institutional portfolios again very low correlation um, and that's sort of where real estate and emerging markets went uh, mm -hmm. that would add five hundred thousand uh, dollars to bitcoin's price so right there uh, that's a, a nearly a tenfold increase if you look at uh, playing the role of cash on the balance sheet which is we did not incorporate this into our institutional white paper because we didn't expect it to be honest, uh, but now we see Square and Tesla and MicroStrategy. Uh, they have diversified some in the case of Square and uh, Tesla, it's five and 8% respectively. Uh, MicroStrategy, it's 100% of their cash in Bitcoin. Um, so if you, if, you, if you were to expect uh, uh, 1%, uh, if corporations did that, I think this is just a U.S. calculation too. That would be a forty thousand increase uh, in Bitcoin. Uh, if it's ten percent closer to where Tesla is, uh, that would be a four hundred thousand dollar increase in the price. So again, uh, another eightfold increase. So, and those are just two use cases. I mean, the biggest use case is an insurance policy for anyone in the world, uh, you know, to protect against confiscation of wealth and. Part of that, it could be inflation with unhinged monetary policies. I think that's a much more of a risk in emerging markets. And so I think we'll see a lot of insurance policies being taken out in the form of uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I, I often reflect that uh, the Saudi princes uh, probably wished that they had uh, uh, allocated some of their wealth to Bitcoin because they certainly didn't expect their own cousin to confiscate it. But that happens all over the world in ways that we don't even understand. We have, we have, uh, and so I think that insurance policy could be the biggest use case. So it would be replacing gold. Plus there's no carrying and holding costs. Exactly. exactly. Which is a huge win.